Welcome everybody to Star Trek Online. This is The Doctor and we are back. It is Halloween day. Literally the day of Halloween. And we have a brand new mission to show you that is an introduction to season 8 of Star Trek Online that is coming out, I assume, in November. And this new mission is called Sphere of Influence. Prepare yourself. This video could be very long. I want to explore this new mission in great detail. I am an explorer. I look around, I search, I look for things that make us go. And from what I've heard, there are secrets, hidden secrets in this mission. I do not know them. But I know that they are there, so we are going to try to find them. I'll probably miss them, but if I do, I may play it again and then show you those secrets later on. But I'm going to try to look for them this time. So, what is all this? What's happening right now? Um, season 8 is coming to Star Trek Online in November, sometime. I don't know when. They haven't announced a release date. But before Season 8 comes out... They will typically have a triple test weekend where um, the weekend prior to the season coming out, you will get a chance to play on triple where actually you can go there now and play some of this stuff. But you, there will be more stuff there and that will be a trial and testing period for all this stuff. And if you are there for a certain amount of hours, you'll get a reward. It has not yet been announced when that's going to happen, but everybody at this point is assuming it will happen in November sometime. Um, but before all of that happens, Cryptic has done something very unique with this Season 8 and given us a brand new featured episode mission that introduces us to Season 8 in a way. Um, it's not an entire featured episode series like many of us want. You know, we typically want those five episode arcs that they have. Uh, this is not that. This is just one mission. But this mission is going to give you epic rewards. And by epic rewards, I mean a new ship um, and items that you can get, I guess, if you replay this mission. Um, to add to that ship or items that can be used interchangeably on other ships and they are extremely useful items. Uh, we're going to go over all those items a little bit later but uh, one of them is a 360 degree anti-proton beam array and it's interchangeable. You can put it on any ship. The other one is a warp core that really helps out your slipstream drive and you can put that on, on any ship. Uh, in addition, you will get a free obelisk ship. This ship is a carrier, and it's slow, but it's a carrier. Um, I do not know the technology and the race and all that. We're going to find that out, I guess, in this mission. Um, it is a carrier, so expect it to, you know, move like a carrier. Um, and there's going to be two versions of the ship. There is the base model, which you get for free just by playing this mission. And then there's going to be an advanced version that you get in the low buy store for 800 low buy. And it has a three piece uh, bonus set. Uh, but in order to get the last bonus uh, for it, you have to get that advanced low buy ship in the low buy store to make sure to get to have all the three pieces so it's a little bit of a ripoff in that case a lot of people are upset that the fact that the advanced version of the ship is in the low buy store and not in a fleet holding or elsewhere so um like the sea store even uh, because the low buy store is more expensive to get a ship you if you open lock boxes to get your low buy um it, it costs pretty much around about 200 us dollars in order, to, if you don't have any low buy at all, to go from zero to 800 low buy by opening lock boxes. Uh, so basically, it's a $200 ship, and a lot of people are upset at that because I mean, why not just put it in the sea store? Uh, you know, you can spend uh, a, a whole lot less, 20 bucks or whatever, and get uh, you know a, a sea store version or a Z store version of it. 
but it's not that way. They've done it in the low buy store, obviously, to get more money. Duh. But you know, that's 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 the way it is. Well, we can talk all about the politics of it, but let's get into this because this is going to, I assume, be fun. I have not played it yet. This is a cold run through. Um, also going on right now is Q, uh, undetermined when he will go away, uh, but he's here right now, so make sure you go and uh, get your, uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that, actually. <laughs> I meant to uh, make sure you get your uh, four-hour double skill bonus going. And uh, then uh, we will continue. Of course, we are an Ensign Ricky. He's an engineer, so keep that in mind as we play through this. Um, I will be playing this mission multiple times because I want to get all the gear on all my characters and I have like nine or ten characters so I'm going to be playing this mission a lot. Uh, you have until December 5th. You have until they do server maintenance on December 5th, 2013. That's how long you have to play this mission. So if you miss it, if you don't get it played by December 5th, you're out of luck on the free ship. This is your only chance. Alright, so you go to your hail menu. You go to in progress. No, you don't go to in progress. You go to available. And you'll see the mission called Sphere of Influence. Now, I have a theory about why it's called Sphere of Influence. A lot of people are assuming that it might uh, coincide with the Dyson Sphere. That is uh, all that Dyson Sphere stuff that's coming out in Season 8. Uh, the Dino Raptors and all that. Dinosaurs with laser beams on their heads and stuff. I don't think it, it deals with that. I actually think uh, Sphere of Influence is referring to the influence of a civilization's uh, power in the galaxy. Uh, the, it's their, literally their, their, the, the area of influence that they have in a star system or a region of the galaxy. That's what I think it refers to. Uh, because I think this is going to get heavily into the Iconians and maybe some other races. I know that it also kind of connects with the Alachi. And then we haven't seen a whole lot about the Alachi yet. Um, what else? Um, oh, this does take place at, at the end of the Tier 5 Romulan reputation. If you have seen my other videos, you saw that I did a whole series. Once you hit Tier 5 Romulan reputation, um, you get you know that series of missions that you play throughout the, the Romulan tiering of the reputation and at the end of that it's revealed and I um, mean this is spoiler alert by the way all this is spoilers <laughs> um, that there's an Iconian gateway underneath New Romulus and at the end of your last episode or last mission of that tier 5 Romulan reputation mission you have left a bunch of Romulans down there to uh, study this thing, you know, they're going to be studying this Iconian gateway down there, and it's huge. Um, so this mission picks up from that. So if you have never played the Tier 5 Romulan Reputation missions, this could be a little confusing. If you have played them, this will make a lot of sense and pick up on that storyline, which I was hoping they would do, and they have done here with Sphere of Influence. Um, and for all I know, this may give us a, a you know, a, a video you know, to show us what's happened. Uh, hopefully it will. Let's see what, let's, let's, let's do this. So this is Detan. He is uh, the dude, the main dude on New Romulus. That tells you right there how it's connected to New Romulus. All right, and it tells you right here. The gateway discovered beneath the surface of New Romulus is prepared and ready for activation. So the scientists that we left down there have prepared, they have made this thing work again. I don't know if that's safe. Well, let's find out. Because the Romulan Republic is dedicated to sharing the gateway and all we learn from it with our allies, we are inviting representatives of the Romulan Republic, the Federation, and the Klingon Defense Force to join us on New Romulus for the first trip through the gateway. I would be honored if you would join us. Well, certainly. Of course I want to go through the gateway on the first time. <laughs> this is awesome. It's like Stargate going through the wormhole for the first time, you know? It's exciting. wonder where we'll end up. Uh, th something else to keep in mind, um, this was announced uh, in a dev blog, um, Michael Dorn has returned and he will be voicing Worf in this episode. So we have the actual actor who played Worf in TNG and DS9 
voicing Worf in this episode. It is pure awesome. Talk about a fangasm. There you go. Uh, we had, of course, Denise Crosby, uh, Tasha Yar in the uh, previous stuff they released, and now we've got Michael Dorn back in this stuff. I only wish they could retrofit his voice back into um, portions of this game where Worf is used, like on the KDF side, you have old Worf you meet and all that. I, w- I wish that they could put his, you know, use him and retroactively put his voice in those missions that would just really be awesome I, I don't think they will but I wish they would okay let's hail him um, we, got, we need to go to New Romulus this is all going to be done on New Romulus and attend the reactivation of the Iconian Gateway and here's the rewards I was talking about special requisition pack obelisk carrier you get it free straight up no you just get it it's awesome and then you get to choose one of the following, the Omnidirectional Anti-Proton Beam and Obelisk Subspace Rift Warp Core. Now we'll look at both of these uh, a little bit later, um, but you can pause and read their data there. I will talk about them more at the end of the mission, but there you go for that. And um, you only get to choose one, so that means you'll have to replay it to get the other one, but you can get both. Just replay the mission, so all you gotta do. Okay, let's go to New Romulus. Get this show on the road. Like I said, this could be a long video. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to show. And, and I mean, right here, this shows you. Where, this is <laughs> this is funny, but this happens every time when something new like this comes out. Um, it's the Earth space. Look, look at all these ships. There are a million ships here. First of all, I love the fact that there are a lot of people on right now doing this, playing this. This makes Stowe feel full again, you know, which is awesome. But look at all these obelisks. These are the ship. This is the ship that you get. Look at them all in uh, around Earth Space Dock. It's like all of Earth Space Dock is filled with obelisks. <laughs> My gosh. That happens every time a new ship comes out. But it's very cool. And it shows that... When Cryptic releases new content, the game can fill up and be impressive. And I just wish they would do it more often than they do. That's all. Let's go to New Romulus, which I bet there'll be a million ships there, but I love it when it does that. I hope it doesn't crash on me. That's, that's my biggest concern, really, is trying to uh, load into New Romulus and then going crash or... I am flying the Avenger. I don't know if there will be any space battle in this, but I am flying the Avenger and I have it equipped. Uh, just, I have it equipped enough to get us through battle situations if we needed to. Um, phasers, I got my energy damage maxed out on phasers. Well, not max. I could do very rare Mark 12, but I do have them all filled up, all file for um, tactical slots. So it's a, um, it's enough to get us through battle. Oh, and you do not have to have completed uh, any of the Romulan t uh, reputation tiers to play this mission. You do not have to have those done. It just helps if you want to understand the story a little better. That's all. But you do not have to have them done. You can. Uh, the requirement for playing this mission is that you have to be level 40. So you don't even have to be max level to play this mission. You just need to be level 40. And uh, that's required to also play to to uh, get the ship. You cannot fly the the obelisk unless you are level 40 and up. And uh, I'm quite interested to see what race the obelisk is uh, from. I mean, it could be Iconian, but it could be something else. It could be. Uh, a different race um, of alien and from what I've gathered from chatter in the chat box I was kind of reading it before playing um, that the the uh, schism aliens from TNG kind of maybe play a part in this I'm not sure and that I was reading in the dev blog also that the design of the obelisk uh, 
does have origins from the Alachi, so whatever race the obelisk is from um, has some connection with the Alachi. And that's why it looks a little bit like maybe a Monbosch carrier. If you've seen the Alachi Monbosch, it looks kind of similar to that. It has that profile where it's got a real heavy, big front, you know. So, um, you'll see. very excited to play this mission. I only wish that there was more of it. I wish there were like, you know, I wish there was a whole series of missions uh, like they did with, you know, Romulan missions and the um, um, uh, Cardassian or the Dominion Cardassian stuff. Yeah, look at all these people here. I love it. And this, we're in uh, zone two out of, I just want to see how many zones there are going right now. Look at that. There's 45 in zone eight, 74 and nine. Seven, uh, 76 right here in 2 so um, these there's a lot of people on right now I love it um, okay I guess we need to start sphere of influence I'll be quiet during the talking part it would be my pleasure okay who is this guy he's a Riemann and he just says it would be my pleasure as part of our evacuation, er, evacuations, excavations into this area, we found artifacts from a much older civilization that once lived on this world, and we know that they are the Day Ones. Um, these primitive people appeared to share the planet with their gods, in actuality a species with a much higher technological level than their own, which were the Iconians. So we know that uh, the, the Day Ones were on this planet with the Iconians. The Iconians had a colony here, the Day Ones lived here. So the Daywinds and the Iconians got together. So maybe the ship is from the Daywinds? I don't know. Um, but it, they, they have a strong connection. These Daywinds were abandoned when their gods left the world, when the Iconians left, but over time developed their own culture and technology. And then they found the gateway. It's Iconian, but it must have seemed almost magical to the Daywinds. Using geothermal energy, they managed to activate the gateway briefly, but the reaction was too unstable. The geothermal tap caused a chain volcanic reaction that devastated the planet, and that's why the planet was uninhabitable for so long until just now. Our scientists say that ash clouded the sky, dropping temperatures and dramatically altering the climate of much of the habitable land. Radiation levels spiked and many of the day ones died. The survivors retreated to underground shelters, but it was the end of their civilization. Only the flora and fauna that could adapt survived until we arrived. You were instrumental in helping us discover the secret of this world. Now that you found the Iconian Gateway, we feel that it can be a boon to the Romulan Republic. The entire galaxy will be at our fingertips. Wow. Okay, that sounds like the Tal Shiar to me. Um, talk to the li liaison Frenic. Welcome to New Romulus. I am Frenic, and I serve as the liaison, liaison officer for Titan. As you can see, we've stabilized the environment in this area as part of our investigations of the gateway. That's right. Remember, we had to wear an environmental suit here the first time, but now we don't. Protective gear is no longer necessary. Admiral Kararek is waiting for you in the gateway chamber. Report to Admiral Kararek. Please follow me. Okay, nice. So it doesn't really give you a video of what happened before. It just gives you a text, text log of what happened. What did he just say? Once we eliminated the need for, need for EV suits, the number of discoveries increased dramatically. This could make, uh, this could make starships obsolete. Oh, they're talking about the gateway. He said follow him, but then he's not moving. Oh, there he goes. I'll leave the MPC chatter going on there so you can read that. Yeah, we had to use protective suits before, but it looks like they've stabilized the environment. That's no longer necessary. Of course, the Tholians were down here trying to get all this stuff, too. I find it interesting that the Rhymelands all of a sudden have this much power in the galaxy because they have an Iconian gateway at their disposal. That's kind of scary, actually. Uh, here we go, the main chambers. That console's new. We got several people to talk to here. Let's start with Frenic. He's our um, 
liaison? It would be my pleasure. Yeah, we read that already. Okay, we already read that. So that's all he has to tell us. He has nothing new. Let's go around to each other, to each person here. Here's Worf, by the way. Michael Dorn, thank you very much for coming back to Star Trek. Very much appreciate it. Talk to Captain Corrin. Corrin, daughter of Grilka, captain of the mighty IKS Fortescue, and survivor of a hundred battles. I would much rather be on the front than uh, front than here, but the Romulans are our allies, and they have asked for our assistance. The High Council has dispatched the flagship of the fleet to show the strength of our friendship. So the uh, Fortescue is here, and uh, that's their mighty flagship. I guess Worf is not going to talk to us right now, but I guess he will later. Let's talk to, um, who is this person? Ooh, she's cute. Can I talk to her? Yeah, let's talk to her. Commander Tiaru Jirak of the RRW Lisette. The Republic has advanced enough that we need a flagship on par with the Enterprise. I have the honor of commanding her. My father was a Romulan admiral. He wanted to change the galaxy for me, for all children. He wanted us to be able to live our lives in peace, to be free. He was betrayed for his beliefs and lost everything. I grew up being watched by the Tal Shiar. I heard the whispers that said I was the child of a traitor. When Datan told me of this plan, I knew this uh, was the world that my father would have wanted. I left the Empress's fleet and never looked back. Okay. Okay. I'm going to look around before I head to uh, talk to uh, Kararek. Again, I'm going to explore, I'm going to look around, these, um, that's what I do, I don't want to miss anything. And, uh, there might be hidden secrets somewhere, you know, you don't want to miss stuff like that. You just never know. See, here's somebody to talk to, I didn't see him back then. This is Eric Cooper. Oh, the gateway? Fascinating. Simply fascinating. Uh, they way. <laughs> Spelling! The way the teams here have used alternative energy sources to supply the immense amount of power needed to reactivate, it is... Of course, the Federation Science Council's position on Arconia technology is that it is very dangerous, and if used at all, it should be with extreme caution. Just the opportunity to study Arconian tech is exciting, but to actually see it in use, I never thought I'd have an opportunity like this. Everybody except Kerrick. No, who are you? You are Ninyan. Iconian gateways can open up anywhere. You don't have to have another gateway to connect to. That means the Iconians could show up anywhere. No wonder they controlled most of the quadrant. Guess that means we need some extra firepower if they show up here. I, yeah, I didn't know that about the gateways, though. I thought you had to have a secondary gateway to connect to, but I guess no, that's true, you don't. Because in the episode where they introduced the Iconians in TNG, the card just ended up on that ship's bridge. So, yeah, I guess you don't need a secondary gate. You just kind of appear wherever you're going. And here's where it pops out of, by the way. It's under there. Lava surrounding it, apparently. Interesting. La magma, I guess, more technically correct. Magma. Talk to Kararek. Welcome. The Romulan Republic is here, along with representatives from our allies in the Federation and the Klingon, to witness the dawn of a new age. Harnessing the power of this gateway will change everything for our people. Yes, we must be cautious. The Daywinds tried to do the same and it destroyed them. But we have been studying this gateway since Admiral Ensign Ricky helped us discover it. That's right, I did. It was all me. And we believe that we understand where the Daywinds went wrong. We now have the technology and knowledge we need to successfully adapt Iodonian technology for our own use. That, if that's not a foreshadowing, foreshadowing of danger and um, problems, then I don't know what is. <laughs> we were confident. We got it. They made. They they had an error. We figured out the error. We fixed it. Sure. We're gonna activate this thing, and it's gonna blow up. We have a few final adjustments to make, and then we'll be ready to. Or interrupts. You think you have corrected the issue? Consider what happened to the Daywogs and what the result would be if the Romulans lose a second homeworld. So good to hear Worf. Well, he doesn't look like Worf. Well, he kind of does. But, wow. 
So good to hear uh, Michael Thorne's voice in this game. Such a pleasure. Thank you from the bottom of my heart as a fan, Michael Dorn, for coming back to Star Trek and fulfilling your role as Worf in Star Trek Online. You have my sincerest, sincerest thanks and gratefulness. I have encountered Iconian gateways twice before. In both those instances, the finest commanders I ever served found the technology to be too dangerous to preserve. It is difficult to believe that you have managed to do what they could not. No problem. The Master of Warf was invited here because of his experience with Iconian Gateways. He has been voicing his concerns with our decision to activate the Gateway. My science teams are convinced that they have solved the problems of the past, but I fear that, like the Ambassador, some of my engin engineers have their doubts. Well, then don't activate it yet. The Taan and the Senate believe this to be an important step for the New Republic, but it is a step that we must take with our allies. At least th they're doing that. You know, the Re Romulan Republic of old or whatever would not have done this. <laughs> we respect their opinions and uh, want them to join us in this venture, just as the Bajorans and the Federation worked in tandem when the wormhole of the Gamma Quadrant was discovered. Of course, we didn't exactly invite the Klingons and the Romulans to that, so, you know... <laughs> Uh, in the interest of easing some concerns, Ambassador, I invite you to take a final check of the data. Perhaps Admiral Antonricki would be willing to assist you? Uh, yeah, I'm ready to assist. Acceptable. Let's do this. Admiral Kerrick, I want to start by reviewing your science team's work. Understood. So I have to uh, actually do some work here before we activate this thing. That's interesting. Speak with a researcher, a drawn, and now we have more contacts to talk to. I'm sorry, did you need something? I don't mean to be so distracted, but it's taken a lot of work and a lot of uh, late nights to get here. Finally, we're ready. We've considered everything that could go wrong and planned for any contingency. The Daewans weren't as advanced technologically as we are. They hadn't even become a warp culture when they tried to repower the gateway. We have advantages that they could only dream of having. There's some risk, of course, but anything worth doing has some risk. We wouldn't be standing on a new homeworld for our people if we hadn't been willing to take a chance to challenge the Tal Shiar. With all due respect to you, Ambassador, I don't think there's anything to worry about. If you want, I'll review the data my team has collected with you. Admiral Ensign Ricky can review the power variance coefficient numbers for the Alpha, Gamma, and Delta monitors. Maybe I need to be uh, need another set of eyes. I've had a lot of trouble sleeping. I find the power variance coefficients for the Alpha, Gamma. If I have to whip out my calculator, I'm going to scream. Where do I find the blah, blah blah blahs? I can't even say the words. Program initialized. Select monitoring program. Okay, the computer has a voice. It has now become HAL 3000. This is bad. Very, very bad when your computer starts talking to you. Um, find variance co- I've seen this movie, I know how it ends. <laughs> Alright, find variance coefficients. Uh, I really don't want to do this. Power output monitors. Alpha 45 TJ, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. Alert, power from beta feed dropping. Adjust power levels from uh, beta feed dropping. Adjust feed. what? Program initialized. Program initialized. Program initialized. Select monitoring program. Uh, okay. Speak with Rus- well, I, I assume I need to learn some stuff from this. Okay, power from beta feed is dropping. It's at 34 TJ. Program initialized. It should be at 77, is that what it's saying? Program. Program. Were you able to find the coefficient numbers for me? Oh, I want the alpha. Uh -huh. Program initialized. Select monitor. Fourteen. 
able to find the coefficient alpha is 14. That looks correct. I wonder what gamma was. Program initialized. Select. 47. Were you able to find the coefficient numbers for me? Oh, I had to go through the whole, to go through the whole string of them. So 14. Alpha is 14. That looks correct. 47. Yes, that's correct. Gamma is 47. The delta was different. Wasn't it? I thought it was 37. Is it 38 or 22? I think it's 38. Your numbers may be correct, I guess but have right. you ever witnessed the power of one of these gateways outside of a holodeck? Well, I have. I was invited here to share my knowledge with those willing to listen. I guess I got that right. I don't know. Even the What's best happened? lands seldom survive contact with the enemy. Well, perhaps we should speak with yes, the engineering Yes, they've been teams. asking for the final power variance numbers. Um, now I'm concerned that that was wrong. Now I can't go back. Talk to <sighs> Finally! No, I don't want a job here. I could use some reliable help. Hmm, these aren't too bad. Better than what we had before. Maybe this will work after all. I agree that the simulations look promising, but I still have some concerns. So do I, but we're on a deadline. My team has the geothermal tap operational, and with the proper numbers, we can finally align the power flow to the gateway and activate it again. I'd be happy to discuss... Uh, your concerns with you, Ambassador, but I'll need someone to help with the final commands to raise the pylons while I monitor the power levels. And, uh... Yeah, he has good reason, he's a good man, I trust him, yeah, okay. Perhaps we can find a solution that will ensure the safety of all of us. Show me your projections. I'll activate the consoles and monitor- I will? Really? I have to activate? I'm in charge of the main power grid? Why are they? These guys have been on this deep thing, studying it for a long time, and they're putting me, who has only been here once, and I only found the thing, and putting me in control of the main power grid? Is that safe and wise? Or is that the stupidest idea you've ever heard of? Here's Corrin. This isn't going to be bad. I do it. I made steam come out of it. That's never a good thing. Okay, there's noises happening. Open gateway pylon. Activate gateway. Why are they making me do all this? I just don't understand it. I don't get it. They're the ones who've been working on this. Okay, I did that. Okay, okay, okay. Well, those are going up there. Yep, it's about to happen. It's about to hit the fan. Well, the numbers are good, but something seems off. This gateway may not be exactly like the others we've encountered. Agreed. Sensor readings from the gateways I've encountered were significantly different than this. Could it be because of the power source you're using? Readings like this make me wonder. You open a door and that means there's got to be something on the other side. Maybe this isn't a one-way trip. Do you think there's something on the other side trying to get in? The numbers aren't saying that exactly, but it's a real possibility. Sounds like we shouldn't activate it then. I understand what the gateway means to my people, but I'm concerned about what it could happen if we open it without taking more precautions. Can we add more security? How's that gonna Captains help? Captains Sean and Corrin have been consulting with Carex security forces. I will ask Corrin to deploy some of her finest warriors. I do not know Captain Sean, but 
He commands an enterprise. An enterprise. He must be a formidable man. He also has less enthusiasm for activating the gateway than others here. I am certain he has considered all the options. I'll speak with Sean see what our options are. Speak with Captain Sean. Where? Oh, all of a sudden you came out of nowhere. How may I assist you? Good to see you again. The team looks like it's almost done with the final checks. Make it quick. Actually, Worf has some concerns about the gateway. And because he can't come over and chat with the Starfleet officer without raising some eyebrows, he's sending you instead. Tell him I share in his concerns about the gateway. What does he think we should do? He wants an option to neutralize the gateway if we need to. I'll admit I've been dubious about this project from the start. Some things are too powerful for anyone to have. Still, it's my job to do what Starfleet Command orders. So the Enterprise is here to assist and represent the Federation. But it's also my job to protect my ship and the Federation. So I had my engineers work up some contingency plans. If Corrin is bringing in extra ground troops to deal with an unwelcome visitor, so that should help. My chief engineer worked up a few small spatial charges with enough power to take out the gateway. If we attach them to the base of the pylons, we'll be able to stop a disaster before it starts. I don't want to use them unless we have to. We're here at the Romulan's invitation after all, but it's always good to have a backup plan. Place the spatial charges. So now I have to go against the Romulans and it's... it's well, I, I, I have to do what the Federation tells me to do because I am a Starfleet officer. So everybody look away while I place this ex large explosive here that you'll never see. Which is a little ridiculous. I mean, it is large. They will see it. But yet, they don't... What are you... Ah, good idea. Well, he saw it. If all the preparations are complete, I see no reason to delay. Prepare to activate... The oh, great. Here we go. Everybody... Oh, this is going to be bad, isn't it? Witness the gate activation. Okay, guys, here we go. It's gonna blow up. I didn't know it. I can see these things. The foreshadowing is there. Initiating final power transfer. Power output rising. Levels are within expected parameters. Until Activating gateway. Until that. Spike! Attempting to something. It is. No good. Abort! Abort the mission! <laughs> I knew it. You shut it down. Shut it down. Detonating charges! Uh, no. no effect. Get everyone out of the chamber. That didn't blow it up. And that's a gigantic rock. Now what? Beam us out of here. Into the gateway. Now! Why not just... Uh, okay. Into the gateway instead. There's a lot of people in here. Raise your hand if you didn't see that coming. Uh, you, sir, over there. I knew that gateway would be trouble. We can't get a reading on where we are or how far we've traveled. The best we can figure out is that we are not in normal space anymore. And we are trapped. Post in the comments if you did not see that coming. Because then everybody will make fun of you and it will... will have good laughs. Okay. The scientists have been able to get a few readings from New Romulus, but the gateway was damaged. We cannot use it to return. A few people managed to grab some supplies on their way through the gateway. They might have something useful. Check the crates. Assist with the wounded. Once we have seen to the immediate problems, then we can worry about getting out of here. Check crate. So, 
how did those people manage to carry crates through? Because I saw nobody with crates. I saw people running for their lives into the gateway and no crates. So, problem, problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did... Seriously, how did people carry crates this big through the gateway with that kind of a rush? Come on. That's just ridiculous. Emergency medical kits. How convenient. A rock hit me on my way through the gate. I guess it could have been worse. I could have still been there when the top of the cavern came down. Well, I guess he's fine. You're scanning a door, it looks like. Pretty purple. I like purple, by the way. I love this color scheme. Purple is one of my favorite colors. Uh, right, medical assistance. It's my left arm. It hurts to move. Uh, apply a sling. Thanks. It feels a lot better. Oh, okay, that's neat. All of a sudden, I'm a doctor, apparently. I'll be okay, Admiral. It's just a scrape. Let's apply a bandage to your scrape. A bandage, I mean, come on. Guys, suck it up. If you've got a scrape and you need a bandage, you're gonna be alright. Jeez. What a bunch of... <laughs> I was fixing to say a bad word. It's my ankle. I can't put any weight on it. I hope we don't have to move quickly. I don't think I can walk. Must much less run. Skin injury. Why am I a doctor all of a sudden? I don't get this. I'm an engineer. I should be doing engineering things, not doctor things. This is good for a science officer. I'm not a science officer. Why am I doing this? A little too sprain detected. Patient should report to sick bay for regeneration. Available for treatment is as follows. Rest, ice, compression, elevation. Rest is the first thing. Well, we can't rest. Ice is the next thing, so apply emergency cold pack. Then ice. No, we can't. So then compress. And then elevate. Well, that was easy. But uh, why did I need to do that? Why can't you take care of it? Data collection technology and portable sensor units, including a few truck. Seriously, look at all these crates that we managed to get through in a few seconds. <laughs> I believe I have found a way to open this door, but it will take two of us to override the controls. So I found basic field rations and some extreme weather stuff. So we have like all of a sudden we have like all these supplies from nothing, from nowhere. See that is not realistic. We should have came through with nothing and then had to try to survive. That would have been exciting. Now we have all these convenient things to conveniently have a convenient time on wherever this convenient place is that we conveniently transported to that conveniently has air to breathe. How convenient. Let's talk to Worf. I think I can open this door, but I will need your assistance. Once I override the security protocols, you will need to rewire the primary motivator to release the locking clamps. Are you ready? No. But I'm gonna have to do it anyway. Now, to see what lies beyond. This is kind of exciting in a way that we are on a, an interesting new place that is breathable, but not in normal space, which is interesting. And look at this design. That is kind of freaky, actually. I like that. Big area, too, to explore. A lot of circly stuff. They like the circles, these people. <laughs> now what? Scan, oh, scan the exits. There's three of them. Let's scan them. Interesting. Are you detecting high trace levels of tetrion radiation? Sure. shows this to be a complex of some kind. There is another large room further down this hallway. 
Well, I've got all these people with us. I'm imagining most of them are red shirts and they just don't know it yet. I am picking up something beyond this door. Yeah. Okay, so I, I do like this though in the fact that this is like new stuff we've never explored before. I feel like I'm in Star Trek, you know, exploring a strange new world or thing or something. This is kind of exciting. And I got Worf on my side. I mean, how, who better of a companion to have with you, honestly? As much as I hate to say this, we will cover more ground if we split up. Agreed. We should keep in contact as we search. And Sean is with us, too. Bakel, Bakel Sean. I, Commander Ninyan will accompany me. Uh, I will accompany you. Yay, I get Worf. You suckers. I got Worf. Take that. Order Federation Security Officer to organize security. You, organize security. Do it. Come. We will find the way out. I'm following you, Worf. You and me, buddy. We got this. We got this thing. Wow. Wow. Whoa. I don't know what it is, but it's cool looking. Data logs show that the environment was recently adjusted from settings non-compatible with most humanoid life. Could these be the schism people? I wonder. Ambient traces of Tetrion. Wasn't Tetrion radiation the thing from that episode? I don't remember. The multi-adaptive life support system is technologically beyond what is currently used in known Alpha and Beta Quadrant, but it appears to have the wear and tear of many decades of use. I'm picking up some odd Tetrion readings, and we've been able to confirm that we're in subspace, but there's nothing conclusive yet. I think we're in a medical facility, although it's not like any sick bay I've ever seen before. Interesting, Sean. This facility is mostly automated. That doesn't mean it's abandoned. We're keeping watch for automated security. Nothing we can't handle yet, but we found something interesting in this room. It looks like some sort of targeting array. I'm going to try to find out more about it. Perhaps it's a way out. Maybe it's a way to open a gateway to a location without a corresponding one on the other end. I'll check in when we know more. Sean out. Ambassador, I think we should take a closer look at the large console. Good idea. If there is a targeting system and a medical bay, we may find the equivalent of a shuttle bay as well. Agreed. So, I, I like the fact that we got all these different teams working on this thing. And uh, we're acting like Starfleet officers, you know? We've come to a new place we've never seen before. We're exploring it. We're scanning. We're trying to discover the mysteries about it. This is... We need more of this in Star Trek Online. We need lots more of this. This is awesome. This is fun. This makes me want to play more. Investigate console. This is the main control console for the environmental controls in this facility. The environment can be set to accommodate a wide range of humanoid or non-humanoid species. Whoever used these controls last set the environment for a breathable oxygen-nitrogen mixture that is standard for most humanoid species. You cannot determine how long it has been since they were last accessed. We have not heard from the security detail. We need to check in with him. Hail. Uh-oh. Red shirts are dead. Are you sure something here is not blocking our communicators? This is suspicious. We should check in with Karn and Sean's teams. Corrin here. 
We haven't found anything in this direction. I'll return to our starting location and find out what's happened. I've found what appears to be some sort of targeting system. Huh. That's strange. Uh-oh. Whatever he's doing... Did you hear that? Problem. We should answer the lookout! Okay. That happened. Captain Sean's team is in trouble. Hurry! Let's do it. Let's leg it. Where are you going? Okay, this way. Got a funny way. Oh, he's right there. <laughs> he wasn't very far from us at all. Examine true recorder. Sean's tricorder, it's still recording, but there's a four minute gap in the file. You find a Starfleet issue phaser, but this one has had several adjustments made to it to maximize its power. The work is impressive. Hmm. Very cool looking, whatever that is. I love these floating holographic displays. I've always thought, you know, they have holographic technology in, in Star Trek. Why aren't the displays holographic, just floating in the air? I mean, you could even have displays like following you above your head or, you know, in front of you while you walk down a corridor. That's the future. You know, holographic things like that in midair following you. Uh, more things to scan. It's a standard issue toolkit. You know the ensign with Sean was carrying one like this, and ooh, a smash combat edge. Looks like a blood No stick. sign of Sean's team. We are not alone here. Smear of blood. Smear of blood is never a good thing. This appears to be a targeting system of some sort with settings of six coordinates. It shares some characteristics with a transporter, but the technology is so far beyond what you've seen before that you're not sure you would be able to operate it. So this te not technology is more advanced than us. This does not bode well. We should rendezvous with Korn and the others. Let's do it. Go. Engage. Okay, I'll engage. Oh, what is this? Unidentified assault drone? Uh-huh. Well, and Worf should walking right up to it. Yeah, I guess we're gonna fire on it. It's not really doing a lot of damage to us. But now they know we're here for sure. Gone. They would not have left without their supplies or weapons. Can you hail them? Nope, static. We must find Corn and the others. We need to hurry. We're all in danger here. Recover the olive, uh, olives. Olive. Follow the olives. This way to the olive tree. All you can eat olives at the Olive Garden. Why doesn't the Olive Garden have olives? Have you ever wondered that? Wait. I know this place. I have been here before. Gosh. It is O M G. Wow. This is a direct. Oh my gosh, I'm having a total fangasm in my pants right now. You do not understand how exciting this is for me to see this room right now. This is straight out of Star Trek The Next Generation Schisms episode, where everybody on the Enterprise was being abducted by these aliens in subspace. Remember, it even said in the episode that aliens like lived in subspace, and the environment was changed because um, their native atmosphere is different from our own. And that's the stuff that was used, the knives and the stuff to probe the aliens. We have found those aliens through the Iconian Gateway, and they definitely are more advanced than us. And I know they have a connection to the Alachi. Oh my gosh, puzzle pieces are fitting together. Yay! This table. I saw one just like it when I served on the Enterprise. Uh, investigate evidence of fights. Blood. Blood. Klingon. And Ferocin. Ferocin. Put up a fight. So that's how you pronounce 
the cat people for Ross. I was calling like for Asian or something. All right, examine data storage. There are data entries here that correspond to our missing people. They will be taken for examination soon. It was a Solanogen-based race, and I have yes. seen this before. Solanogen, whatever that means. When I served on the Enterprise, we attracted attention of aliens who existed solely in subspace. There it is. They abducted us, experimented on us. We did not know why, but their actions went far beyond mere curiosity. Yeah, why? what did they want? We never really figured that out. We were able to stop them before they established a pocket of subspace on board the ship, but not before they sent a burst of energy through. If these aliens served the Iconians, that energy could have been a message. Yeah, that's true. I remember that, and they never figured out what that pocket of energy ever was, uh, but it escaped into our galaxy. Hmm. Koran was not taken without a fight. Of that I am sure. And this table has not been used yet. These aliens must be holding the others. It is only a matter of time before they will be examined as well. And the experiments can be deadly. Everyone here is in danger. We must find and free them. Yeah, I agree. We gotta get out of here. But our, the question is, are we on a starbase or are we on a ship? Could this be the obelisk ship that we're going to get? I do wonder. There is a holding area down this hall. We should... Automated defenses! Defend yourself! You got it. War for me. Killing drones. That awesome. guardian was damaged by a disruptor. Corin's work. Let's go, buddy. You and me. Killing things. We can overload the power cell from that Guardian. It should blast through the door. Okay. Activity log. Oh, it's got a log. Perimeter sweep complete. No anomalies found. Unauthorized gateway access detected. Dispa Ooh, the, so they have a gateway on board. Or something like that, anyway. They can detect gateway travel. Unauthorized beings found taking appropriate measures. Be ready. There may be more guardians beyond this door. Break down door. Boom goes the door. Ha, we, ha, we walk in, we stroll in like pimps. Oh yeah. Okay, there's been some damage. Oh yeah, we just caused it. Ha ha! These drones are down. Okay, let's. Uh, these are some interesting prison cells. Let's um, holding disable these holding pins. Come on, guys. We we'll need your help. Drone. Gonna help me fire them. I guess they probably disarmed everybody. Uh, except for scratch marks around the door, someone tried desperately to escape. Ooh. There's a dead person in there. You find a desiccated corpse. It's not from a spe any species you recognize. Ooh, that means I gotta take a closer look. So I've never seen this species before. Exam Ooh, see, I didn't know you could examine the body. I'm glad I went in here. Secrets! You find a... It is not from a species you recognize. Yeah, well, I got that. I should be going in these things and just checking for secrets. I'm going to do that real quick, so stand by. Maybe you get an accolade for like walking in each one. <laughs> That'd be something. I don't see Captain 
Sean or Maya here. There's no more time. We need to stop wandering around this place and get back to New Rhymelis. Staying here is only going to get us killed. No. There is still someone missing who could be saved. We are not leaving without them. He's right. We keep looking. Let me go in here real quick. Okay. No, there's nothing in there. Alright, so... Can we talk to anybody? There seems to be talkie signs on here, but where are they? Oh, that was examine that one. I've already done that. And, oh, that was examine that drone. Okay, I did that. Alright, let's move on. I see nothing else in this room. Is everybody coming with me? I guess not. They're just gonna stay right there, I guess. Okay, there they are, the clicky aliens. And they're clicking. Okay, this is sweet. Examine Sean. Now they all ran away too when I came in, that's interesting. I guess they don't fight well. <laughs> At least hand to hand, or person to person. rely on their drones and technology. The drones are really nothing. Those are very easy to beat. I hear them clicking. You hear them back there clicking? I hear them clicking. Boy, that clicking sound, when I first saw the episode Schisms, uh, it freaked me out. I tell you what, I had, I, I had uh, bad dreams about that clicking sound. I didn't want to go to bed in the dark. Afraid I would get abducted with clicky sounds. Of course, I was very young when I saw it. Sean is pale and unresponsive. His breathing is shallow and his pulse rate is dropping. He requires immediate medical attention. Tricorder scan shows that Sean's left arm and both antenna have been surgically amputated and then reattached. An unknown form su substance has been introduced into his lymph nodes and his superior vena cava has collapsed. Sean's cardiovascular and lymphatic systems have been severely damaged by the experiments. He requires immediate medical attention. The suggested procedure is to regenerate veins, restore circular functions, and purge lymph nodes. Okay, regenerate veins. Um, restore circulatory function and purge lymph nodes. What? What happened? Can How? You? Can you help Mike? Yes, I can. And you're good? I'll just examine her through this thing. A quick try to scan that my blood has been completely replaced with a synthetic liquid polymer. Even immediate, some they did that on the Enterprise too. Well, I remember one of the crewmates was injected with a uh, polymer. Even immediate medical attention would be no help. This family and friends will want to know what happened. It may not provide comfort, but it could provide closure. You carefully remove his communicator and identification so that that can be returned to his loved ones. There's nothing more we can do here. We want any help with finding our new survivors or stopping what's happening on New Romulus. We need to keep moving. Agreed. The best way to honor Mayak's memory is to save his new home. Agreed. Follow energy signature. Ah, uh, they are clicking in the background and I am not liking the clicks. Exit through the doorway. I don't know where we're gonna end up. Oh my gosh. It's a whole complex of complexes. Some pretty impressive stuff. The gateway energy signature is emanating from somewhere across this expanse. We need to find a way across. My scans indicate there's some sort of control system at work. Perhaps we can use that to activate a connection to the next platform. I'm picking up more of those automated defenses. They are at my tricorder's maximum range, but they will be upon us quickly. The uh, wounded are too weak to put up a fight. We should cross quickly and make our stand from a position of strength. Or... You should scout ahead. Korn and Sean will remain with the injured and defend them if the Guardian drones arrive.
Okay, so we're in subspace, but we're outside. I don't know. This is freaky. Well, if you ever wondered what subspace looks like, there you go. <laughs> Scout ahead. We will escort the others when oh the way gosh. is clear. So we just walk the pathway then. Don't walk off the platform though. How can we breathe out here? I don't get it. Wait a minute, why am I the only one crossing? Why am I the scout? This is pretty sweet, I'm not gonna lie. This is pretty What just happened? Um nothing. A planet. Is that Earth? Uh oh my gosh. Oh my oh my wait a minute, hold on. I'm seeing a thing. I'm see I'm that is ESD, and that is Earth, and that, what, and that's the moon, and, and this is a, what is that, a, you're, I don't know what you are, but you're cool looking, and what, does this connect to other points in the galaxy or universe, do each of these plat, wait a minute, wait a minute, I just had a thought. What if each of these platforms connect to a different point in space? Like I could go to, you know, that platform and go, and I would see a different area of space. I could go to another platform and see a different area of space, and they basically teleport you there, like the Iconian Gateway. If so, that is some massive technology and massively advanced technology, and um, it's like we're in space. But we're not in space, we're in subspace. So from subspace you can access all points of space at once, perhaps. Oh my gosh, my mind just blew up. Yes, system soul. Dominant species human. They know us. Uh, Servitor presence, level 4 surveillance in effect. So they are surveying us. They are definitely surveying us. Ideal site for harvesting. Uh, remember, the Alachi also harvest. So that, there's a connection. Servitor races have used disease, diseases, epidemics, and internal conflicts in ancient past to gather specimens for study. Population is numerous, but mostly peaceful. Poor candidates for servitor status high. Creativity levels and self-preservation instinct make them inclined to fight rather than submit when faced by overwhelming foe. See Borg for more information. I want to see the Borg one now. So, yeah, this is Soul. They can easily get to our system just like that. They can be aggressive when threatened. Recommend that all activities in system be covert until invasion is launched. They are planning a freaking invasion. Target for extermination. If Soul system is eliminated, models show that political entity known as Federation may collapse. The Soul system. Earth. Not good. Oh, okay. Just, so all these, so these things activate platforms to different things. Extend bridge. Let's go this way first, because there's less that way. Then we'll go back around. Now we're back into subspace, and we're seeing what it really looks like. Thought I saw aliens standing there. No, it's just war for Storage facility Z98. Purpose: supply and transport of river troops during expansion and preservation. Capacity: 4.7 million units. Docking station: 220. Current status: error. The last uh, storage facility Z98 has been in stasis model for error cycles. Connection to gateway network unstable. So this maybe shows us the extent of the Iconian gateway system then. The 
fact that it can extend to... I mean, and look at all those plat... Look how, look how vast that is out there. Look at all those different platforms. Good gosh. Okay, I tried. It didn't do anything. Wait a minute, that's a Borg world. I know that star system. I think that's one of the missions we played in this game. I think that's Borg. No, that's Kronos. Ha! Boy, how I couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> that's bad. System is Kronos. Dominant species Klingon. Level 4 for surveillance and effect. Aggressive warlike species that dominates this area of space. Strong tendencies to fight rather than submit. Harvesting programs and paths have been problematic. Only successful when used in concert with internal conflict. Possible candidates for server race. Key members of government and entities known as great houses can be used to direct rest of population. Military structure and most organization makes population already accustomed to taking orders from superiors. Recommend study of honor in society for use as a tool for control. If population can be absorbed into server species, it would be a great addition to our fighting strength. If they cannot, extermination must be swift. We cannot give the Klingons a chance to organize against us. Kronos. This is not this. a holodeck. It's a live image. This is not a holodeck. It is a live image of my world. Hey, you're just now catching on to that? I love this. This is so epic right now. I mean, epic. This is an epic Star Trek. Imagine seeing this on TV or the big screen. Now what planet is that? I don't even know what planet that is. Uh, Vendros 4 is... Dom oh, the Dominion! They have, they have the Dominion home planet here. Level 9 surveillance in effect. Dominion scientists discovered an intact gateway 37 cycles ago, but it was destroyed by opposition forces before they could activate it. There are other gateways in the region that remain inactive. Agents are in place to stop the Dominion from discovering the location of these gateways bef before we are prepared. As to the Dominion themselves, we recommend observation but no engagement. The Dominion are organized and used to subjugating large numbers of species spread across a large area of space. When the Alpha and Beta Quadrants are firmly under our control, then we will have the resources needed to conquer the Dominion. Vandros 4 I remember this world. We found an Iconian gateway there during the Dominion War. So they are planning to invade by way of these, um, uh, by way of this gateway system, which can access things really easily. Alert. Connection to Gateway Network unstable. Immediate attention required. Gateway 7,255. What? So is that the... Oh, wait a minute. This is some interesting information right here. So are they saying that there are 7,255 gateways out there? But there are 5,967 that are inoperative? Are inactive? And gateways that are damaged or inoperative are 880. Alert. Gateways... In Andromeda active? Oh my gosh, they have gateways into the Andromeda galaxy? Unauthorized connection to network detected in Hobus system. Unauthorized connection to network detected in Hobus. What gateway is that? Who's using that one? Okay, so they have gateways in the freaking Andromeda galaxy. Now, in the original Star Trek series, there were a couple of species of alien from the Andromeda Galaxy that we have heard of. But other than that, pretty much the Andromeda Galaxy has been ignored in TNG and 
DS9 and Voyager and all that. Really nothing about the Andromeda Galaxy. Even in this game, nothing about the Andromeda Galaxy. But here we have our first clue of potential things that could come from the Andromeda Galaxy through this uh, gateway network. Or we could even go to the Andromeda Galaxy through this gateway network. Can you imagine that? I mean, Star Trek is one of those franchises that really doesn't have the performance to explore other galaxies yet. They're not quite to that level. But other races could, like the Iconians or the these people here, the um, whatever their race is called, obviously have that technology. So that's interesting. That is extremely interesting. Another world I've never seen before. Oh, New Romulus. Oh, I have seen it. It doesn't look like New Romulus, but it is. But anyway, they got a direct connection right here. Dominant species is Romulan. Level 8 sur surveillance is in effect. Survivors of Romulan extermination have gathered on site of former Daewon homeworld. They have uncovered sites belonging to several races and are attempting to reactivate Gateway. If Gateway is successfully activated, they may threaten entire network. Well, we just did, baby. Haha. <laughs> Attempts to use Elachi to eliminate threat are unsuccessful. What? Okay, there we go. The Elachi are a hired race. These people, whatever they're called, hired the Elachi to eliminate the Romulan threats. That's why the Alachi were attacking everybody in the whole series on the new Romulus faction. That's the whole reason why they're being attacked by the Alachi, and they are hired to do so by these people. And are these Iconian? Well, these obviously are not Iconians, because they're the clicky people. And uh, we've seen what an Iconian kind of looks like. But they are maybe closely related. Anyway, or they at least use the Iconian Gateway Network. I think this has always been here. Maybe this race just found the Iconian Network and kind of made it their own. Anyway, that's po possible, I guess. Alliance with Tal Shiar is problematic. Romulans, Romulans as a species show more self-determination and willpower than in previous observations. Leader known as Sela must be controlled or eliminated. Several key members of Romulan Republic Gateway Research Team have been taken for additional study without their knowledge. Really? Without their knowledge? Uh-oh. Brain scans of researcher Adrana have yielded vital information about the project. Uh-oh. She's a spy. Adrana, you're going down. Agents have used that information to destabilize the gateway. Oh, that's why it blew. If activated, seismic instability will affect entire planet. Exceeded, expected outcome is 70% reduction in population. Oh, crap. That's not good. Remaining survivors must not be allowed to form organized groups. Recommend subsuming them into Elachi as soon as possible. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think not. New Romulus. The tectonic activity is getting worse. We must find a way to stop it. Okay, let's, uh, got a couple more to go here. have this urge to jump off. I just really do, but I'm not going to do it because I don't want to ruin this video, <laughs> but I do have an urge to just jump off and see what happens. Okay, what planet is this? It's like Mars, but probably not. No, it's Iconia. It's the uh, homeworld of Iconia. Dominant species is none. Level 1 surveillance in effect. The home world is still unsuitable for habitation. Although servitor races have begun subspace modifications in preparation for invasion. When Quadrant is pacified, we will use forced labor to terraform, ter terraform world for our return. Almost be as... Maybe they are Iconians. So the clicky people are Iconians? Oh? They could be. It says the home world is still wait so but no that that doesn't mean the clicky people are that just means to this network 
they obviously would have a connection to their own home world and the database is just reflecting the fact that it's whoever you know the this is iconium technology this is our home world that doesn't mean the clicky people are okay need to be I careful know with that this planet need to see what happens but i think that would be correct Alert! Safety measure status 6 in effect due to gateway instability. All space gateways for large ship movements have been withdrawn to subspace until network instability is addressed or proper activation codes are transmitted. Okay. So this is an active network. I mean, it's being heavily... I wonder where this is... Uh, it's obviously in subspace, but I mean, like, I wonder where in space this is. I don't know. I don't even know if that even makes sense, but... <laughs> It's a thought. Last one, apparently. Okay, I do not know the planet. That's very cool looking. Alright, anyway. System is Quora. Species are Quoran. Never even heard of them. Level six surveillance. Industrious and technologically advanced. Extremely low level of automation means population must constantly refresh workforce. Use of radioactive mines to infect ship crews and bring them to Quora is interesting but ultimately inefficient. We would require greater amounts of loyal serv servitors to pacify Delta Quadrant than this method would provide. Recommend cooperation and eventual inclusion as a servitor race in exchange for their loyalty and detailed uh, information on their indoctrination techniques will alleviate their manpower problems. The Delta Quadrant? Does the Iconian influence reach so far? I, I th Dude, it reaches all the way to the Andromeda Galaxy. I think it reaches at least to the Delta Quadrant. Um, but this planet reminds me of that episode from Voyager where um, the uh, crew of Voyager or people or somebody or the captain and people, whatever, were abducted by a workforce or indoctrinated into a workforce and made to pretend like they were they were brainwashed basically to, to work for these people. I think it's referring to that episode. If so, that's a very cool uh, connection that I did not see coming. Current status, ship, obelisk one, servitors, Sol Solani, status, ready to deploy, activation codes, authorized, waiting for navigation. Ooh, that's our ship we're going to get. Accolade complete, reconnaissance. So that was for... I guess scanning all those or going to all those extra consoles, but um, there you go. There's an accolade. I, I like it. Okay, let's go over here. This is just amazing. This appears to be some sort of master control panel. I believe we can use it to open the gateway. Yeah, there's uh, the pylons for the gateway right there, in fact. Can we access the database? Nope. We must know what the Iconian plans are. Okay, this one's tougher. There we go. Shield's pretty good on it. Need to download the data and move everyone here before more guardians arrive. Summon everyone to the platform. Okay. Now what? We're on power. 
I will remodulate the power system while you reroute the flow. That's a star chart! Are all those markers Iconian gateways? Whoa. Look! That's the new Romulus gateway! Where? Uh, where? Because <laughs> I don't see it. But anyway. Wow! So is that the entire galaxy and then those are the gateways in the galaxy? Because that is freaking awesome. Okay, what do I gotta do? The other side, huh? What? Well, I didn't say that. I don't know what it just did. I don't know what I'm doing right now. Just like Simon says. Oh, repeat. Oh, watch and repeat. Oh, well then let's reset it because I need to watch it. Correct. Okay, watch and repeat. Uh, was it? Oh, I just forgot what it was. Red, yellow. Is that blue or green? Red, yellow. Romulus was reset. Got it. Just like that Wasn't episode on TNG. <laughs> Simon says... Ambassador, we'll cover you as you download the data. Download? The paths are retracting. It's a warp ship. They know we're here, and I don't think they're happy. Do you hear that? That oh doesn't sound good. Gosh. Security reinforcements are inbound. Mike. We should use this gateway. Warp! We're out of time! That's a lot of ships coming at me. I am. Oops, I went by too fast. I missed what he said. Is he staying, by, staying behind? I have downloaded my can. It's time to leave. We've got the network section. The Nero escape. There are some dash and rise. We could have been for more sections. They go, oh, okay. That's all. Okay. Whatever. Yay! That is, but it's cool. I think that was the bridge of the new obelisk. This is a bridge. We have walking wounded, but some of us can still serve. Where do you want us? I uh, want you where you can help us. Investigate bridge. This is a bridge. Oh, yeah, this is uh, the obelisk. This is the new ship we're getting, and this is the bridge. And this is really awesome. Investigate console. This appears to be a tactical console, which controls the ship's shields and power levels. Captain Sean would be the most effective officer here. Okay. Captain John, you have a position. It's a very big bridge. Although, I don't know, like much she is, but, but she has been hypnotized by these people. I don't want her in command of anything. I want to shoot her in the head. That just closed. That frightens me. <laughs> this is the primary weapons control. You can think, uh, yes, wharf, of course, weapons, go. And water? I want to walk in it, but I'm afraid I'll die. The floating ball just went by my head. This ship has got some big balls, all right. Bridge. Oh, I guess there's one more to do. This panel provides bridge control for engineering, Captain Corin. We have saved the Romulans' home world, but the gateways are open now. All, All of them. We do not know who will use them. It may be the Alachi 
or it may be something far worse. We must warn everyone of what is coming. The Iconian uh, invasion, it's happening, man. Receiving tactical telemetry. I'm detecting another gateway in the Jurette system. It's, it's big. big. Ship sized. The gateway is transmitting a high band subspace signal. Sensors are picking up. Elachi ships on an intercept course. I suggest we go there and contact New Romulus for reinforcements. Agreed. Can we use that gateway? Not from here. I can make a gateway for us and set a destination close by, though. Can you just make one? Do it. Taking us out. Oh, wow. I don't know what I'm seeing, but I'm liking it. <laughs> don't know what just happened, but it was cool. Cool as... Sensors show that we are in the Jurette system. Systems are all reading normal, but... Object sighted near the ship. It's an Iconian gateway. It is an Iconian gateway. gateway. Hail the Romulan Republic. I'm very glad to see you all safely returned. When the quakes began, we lost all communications with the gateway chamber and feared the worst. But where did you go? Through the gateway? And what is that ship? I've never seen anything like it. I'll provide a full report as soon as I can. Suffice to say that we had to open the entire Iconian gateway network to save new Romulus. You reset... Oh, elements preserve us. There could be hundreds of gates, thousands. Yeah, there's like near 8,000 actually. But they're all active now? Well, yeah, they're, they are. And there was a ship-sized gateway hidden in subspace in this system. Oh, so the gateways are hidden in subspace. That's why we can't find them. Enough talk. The gateway is transmitting a signal. I am picking up a corresponding one from an entire fleet of Alachi ships on an intercept course. Send every available ship. We must fight if we are to survive. Defeat Elachi Vanguard. Sending reinforcements now. Good, Good luck. luck. And may the elements protect us. We'll all. hold off the Elachi here until reinforcements. We will hold off the Elachi until allied forces arrive. Oh my. Press That's... the launch button to create a wing of fighters to aid you in combat. Each hangar supports two wings. Okay. Activate attack mode to send your fighters after the selected enemy. Activate escort mode to have your fighters defend the selected ally. Which one's the attack mode? Activate intercept mode and your fighters will prioritize small targets such as torpedoes and mines. Activate recall mode to call... Yes. Oh, I can select each one I want individually. I see. This is must be attack then, and that's attack mode. Okay. My swarmers, obelisk swarmers. Of course, we're gonna look. I'm gonna do a whole separate episode or on this uh, ship, and we will look at it in more detail later on. So this is not a uh, detailed look at this ship. This this uh, video is specifically for this mission. But I believe you me, I will be looking at this ship in more detail, a lot more detail. Someone also mentioned to me I should press U and look at the default loadout on this ship. Uh, and take a screenshot of it too, which I will do that. Print screen. There we go. I believe that saved the screenshot. Um, because the loadout they have on it is uh, a, a potentially good build. They have here dual anti-proton beam bank mark 12 and an anti-proton beam bank. And obviously anti-protons is going to be the way to go with this ship. Transphasic. Then they have a neutrino deflector array and they have a combat impulse engine and a covariant shield with something called fused. So that's, I've never heard of that fused. What fused does, I really don't know. I guess that just makes it so that I can't remove the weapons. I really don't know what fused does, but anyway. Anti the proton beam array. There's the omnidirectional anti-proton beam array. I, I'm gonna like that. Transphasic, and they put batteries on us. They got uh, neutronium RCS. So they did put an RCS on here. Um, that. Let you know it's a slow-moving ship when they have to put an RCS on it. EPS, 
and monotonium for kinetic. What is this? This must be the console universal reactive antiproton proton cascade chamber. It's, they put a shield, uh, a field generator for shield capacity and a shield emitter for regeneration rate. And uh, two anti-proton mag regs and the hangers. And you can't take these off. So, I mean, you know, they're... Yeah, I would love to have all that stuff for free, but no, you can't take any of that off. Um, well, uh, let's do this thing. I don't know how it's going to end up, but let's do it. You know what? Turn rate is not so bad, given the fact that it has does have that RCS, and that really helps. Um, oh, one thing before we go into battle here. I do want to look at the stats on it while we're in here. 3,000 crew... Um, the hull is at 62,000. That gives you an idea. Now the advanced version is going to have an even higher hull, plus 10%, I believe, uh, more hull. Turn rate is 5.5 .5 because of that RCS. So 5.5, 5 is the default turn rate. 5.5 .5 with that RCS is what we got now. Of course, putting more RCSs on just takes away from your slots, but this is kind of ship really demands it. But that's kind of doable. That's kind of doable with an RCS. Uh, that's, that's not terribly. What is that? It's got a skull on it. Officers. Look at this, look at this. It's a good day to die. Buff damage is targets. Look at, look at all that. The warrior's way. We got Captain Sean maneuver. <laughs> Go Captain Sean! Go warrior. Chance, critical severity, flight turn rate buff. Uh, turn, grand More Alachi in balance. Hold damage. them off. Okay, cool. And what do you do? Um,
Karachi can send their entire fleet. We will not fall. Cannot be delayed. Agreed. Let's the Alachi forces have been destroyed. No further hostiles inbound. Captain Sean, the Enterprise should scan the gateway. We need to know more. Agreed. But we should destroy that gateway now, while we still have the chance. No! That gateway is in Romulan space. It belongs to the people of the Romulan Republic. Another invading force could arrive at any moment. Afraid of a fight, Captain? A Corrid. Prudence is not One cowardice. less gate to deal with. The gateways are powerful. They may be too much for any of us to control. Destroy it. We should disable it before it becomes another threat to the Romulans, and to us all. Yes. How is this different from the wormhole near Bajor? This is only a strategic and scientific asset, 8, and it belongs to my people. Captain Sean, if you destroy the Gateway, I can assure you that Detan will reconsider our friendly relations with the Federation. The Klingon Empire will fully support our Romulan allies in this matter. Enterprise to Captain Sean. Sir, we've been scanning the Gateway. What did you find? The Terminus is at a fixed point now. We can determine that. But then, I don't know what we picked up, but the monitors on the bridge are all showing an Omega. We're locked out of the computer, and engines are offline. We get... Mega particle? We need you back on the Enterprise, sir. I see. That changes things significantly. The Omega. Indeed it does. I should return to the Bordeskew. Worf will be waiting for you. Corrin to the Bordeskew. One to transport. I should return to New Romulus. Immediately. Ambassador, it was a pleasure to work with you. I wish we could have had that talk. Agreed. Another time. Send my regards to your chief engineer, Captain. I'll oh. let Chief O'Brien know. You just uh, Sean Chief to O'Brien. Enterprise. Got a shout Transport out. Transport me directly to my ready room. Chief O'Brien. Today was a glorious battle. You have won much honor for yourself oh, and your allies. Still have the gateway out there. It you? seems there are larger conflicts that all of our people will need to face. If we are to survive, we may need to face them together. It was an honor to fight beside you. The gateway. Are you? Hmm. Uh, wait. I thought we were going to destroy this thing. <sighs> so we're just going to leave it there? Really? Really? Going to leave it? <sighs> Ops. Are you ready to leave the system? I guess. Okay, 
Wow, look at all these ships. I love it. Let's hail the ton. While it is regrettable that so many gateways were unlocked, I know that together we will face the future. Our governments will be in contact in regards to this Omega situation. When we are prepared to act, I know you will be involved. Thank you, Admiral, and good luck in the future. I want more of this so bad right now. Look at these gigantic skill points and expertise we're getting. I want this so bad. I want more. All right, I can only choose one right now. I'm going to choose the Omnidirectional and a Proton Beam, but um, I'll play this again and get the Rift Core. Rift Warp Core. Because I'm going to have both. But uh, I said we would talk about these a little bit, so I'm gonna I'll do it more in the uh, ne in the next video looking at this ship. But basically, this subspace rift core. Let's look at what it's got here, because uh, I'm curious too. Plus five additional auxiliary power. Plus ten maximum auxiliary power. Maximum warp factor of ten. Add seven point five percent of your auxiliary power to your shield power, so it will boost your shield power basically. 50% recharge time reduction to slipstream drive, so we have uh, you can go into slipstream more. Plus 15.2 starship system repair resists subsystem offline status. That'll be good against the Tholians too. Plus 20% turn rate while in slipstream, so you can turn faster in sector space and a 0.1 slipstream speed bonus. Uh, shield power buff. It's got a uh, shield regeneration and a plus sh uh, plus 15 shield power setting. So this is a good uh, warp core for shield buffing, it looks like, if I am not mistaken. Although I do wonder how it uh, compares to the elite fleet warp core that you can get that kind of does the same stuff, buffing your shields through auxiliary power. Um, I have that shield, uh, that, that engine actually on my main character. So what I'll do is I'll uh, replay, I'll play this mission on him, the doctor, and I will compare this warp core to the fleet warp core that you can get and compare the stats. I think that'll be an interesting comparison for you all to look at and me as well. So we can see how this compares to a um, fleet level warp core. Um, because this sounds really good. It sounds about on the level of fleet. Well, not really, but close. And for people that don't have fleet access, this is a good way, a good free way, to get a really good free warp core that is awesome, basically. And you've got until December 5th to get it, so get it while you can. Uh, and then you've got the Omnidirectional Anti-Proton. I'm really looking forward to this. It's got Accuracy, Damage, and Arc. Energy Damage, 360 Targeting Arc. And that's what I like about it, is it's 360 targeting, just like the Kinetic Cutting Beam. It does anti-proton damage. Um, it's got, uh, of course, because it's anti-proton, it has that crit severity stuff. It's got accuracy on it. It's got an accuracy thing. And it's part of a set. Uh, you get the console and the, uh, the warp core together. You put, you put this, the warp core, and the console. Again, you can only get the console on the advanced ship, which you have to purchase in the low buy store. But if you get all three of those things and put them on one ship, basically the obelisk, or, or advanced obelisk, um, you would get the uh, set two bonus, which is focused anti-proton emitters, and then a set three bonus called enhanced carrier synergy. And then we are going to get our obelisk carrier for free right, right now. So I will look at this, and this shows you the uh, the the set abilities you're going to get. Set two ability is the focused anti-proton emitters plus ten anti-proton damage. So, if you're going with the obelisk technology um, three-piece set, you are going to want to use anti-proton weapons. That's what this set is built for: is anti-proton damage. So configure your obelisk or advanced obelisk with anti-proton weapons. That's what it's made for. Um, and then the enhanced carrier synergy, if you have all three of the things, when you activate any emergency power ability, your hangar pets will also activate a weak emergency power ability of the same type. I don't find that that impressive, but maybe it's a thing. Um, I'm going to use this. You can use the warp core and the omnidirectional anti-proton beam on any ship. Uh, so I'm going to use it on this ship as... 
in combination with the kinetic cutting beam. See, I think together, this and the kinetic cutting beam, both of them being 360 degree arc, would work really well on an escort. Because think about it, you have all your dual heavy cannons and your torpedo up front, right? But then in the rear, what do you usually put in the rear on an escort? Well, you usually put turrets, right? Well, how about having a kinetic cutting beam and this anti-proton beam? Both of them can be firing on your enemy no matter how your ship is turned in any direction because it's 360. So that means you've got all this forward firepower on your escort and at the same time that you're forward firing on your enemy, you also have the kinetic cutting beam and the anti-proton beam also firing forward on your enemy. So you have, you know, all your, what if you have four or five, you know, three, four or five uh, weapon slots up front, you have those weapons plus the two in the rear all being fired on the enemy at once. It's just more, that's really going to up the ante on making um, escorts more uh, DPS heavy for sure because you're adding, uh, I, I think this is probably going to be more DPS than uh, a turret would be. I could be wrong, but I mean, I think it might be. Um, and especially if you're using anti-proton weapons, then using the tactical console slots to use those mag regulators to boost anti-proton energy would probably all will probably also boost the anti-proton damage on the beam array uh, or on this thing. So that's a way to you can boost the power of this thing as well by going with all anti-proton weapons and then anti-proton tactical consoles, and you would really trick it out. I'm going to put it on. I want to see it in action. I'm going to try it because uh, I want to see what it looks like and all that stuff. Uh, and I'll look at it in the next video. We'll do some stuff with it. Um, but that's what I got so far, everybody. That was Sphere of Influence. And uh, just what I thought. It's not really about a Dyson Sphere. That is coming in Season 8. We're going to get a Dyson Sphere in the Delta Quadrant that they found. And... Uh, stuff dealing with the Voth. That's going to be exciting. But this is totally separate of that, and I like that fact. The Sphere of Influence is about the Iconian's Sphere of Influence in the galaxy, and it's all-encompassing. They have access points to anywhere in this galaxy and the next galaxy beside us, Andromeda. I mean, they have all these connecting points in two galaxies at least. That is impressive. That is the most advanced race so far in Star Trek. <laughs> oh, besides Q, obviously. But, I mean, that is just impressive. And they are planning an all-out invasion as we knew it. But now we know that they can come in all at once through these gateways. And um, we have no chance to survive. Make our time. Move Zig. For great justice. I mean, they'll come in at every point in the galaxy at once and consume us. We have no chance to survive. Someone said a bust a bomb. So that's pretty impressive. Here's my question though, the clicky aliens that we saw, were those the Iconians or were those just an alien race that has come in and taken over the Iconian technology? I don't know. It wasn't very specific about it. It lends to it that maybe they are, but then when we saw a flashback of the Iconians and the Daywinds together at the uh, last Tier 5 Romulan Reputation mission, remember there was a holographic image shown of the Daywinds beside the Iconians. The Iconians, uh, I thought, were the tall, the tall ones, you know, the uh, not not with the long heads. I thought they were the tall, lanky, lanky ones in that hologram, but maybe they were the shorter alien. Maybe that, maybe I, we got it reversed. I don't, I don't know. But that, it, it, but if those were the Iconians, then the clicky aliens are not the Iconians because they didn't look like anything we saw from that hologram. <laughs> but maybe they are. I, I don't know. So leave your comments and, and let me know what you think. I, I mean, there, there is evidence to support the fact that the clicky aliens are the Iconians, and there's evidence to support the fact that they are not the Iconians, but perhaps just a powerful subspace race or, or race of aliens that have come and taken over and found this Iconian gateway network and have 
for maybe hundreds or maybe thousands of years made it their own home and um, now want to take over the galaxy with it. I mean, either one could be true, and I don't know which one is true, so let me know what you think about that, because that would be interesting. And I'm going to play this mission more, and maybe I'll pick up more on that as I play it more times. Uh, also, um, I, 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 I can't say that I found many secrets. I found one secret by scanning all the uh, platforms, and I got that one accolade. Uh, but maybe there are other hidden secrets I wasn't aware of. So if you guys find any other hidden accolades or secrets or things, let me know. I'll definitely be replaying it. I might make another video on it if there's a lot of uh, in more interesting secrets in there that I missed. And then the next video after this will probably be a long one as well, and it's going to be on the obelisk. I'm going to look at the obelisk, uh, the standard obelisk. I cannot afford the low buy obelisk. And we'll go to the low buy store right now real quick, and let's see... Here it is, the Advanced Obelisk Carrier, and it is 800 Lobi, and it includes the console that's part of the PC set, so you have to own it to get that. I'm nowhere near 800 Lobi, it would cost me a lot of money, and right now that's not an option. So I am, uh, I'm probably a very far away from being able to afford the Advanced Obelisk Carrier. I'm not going to have it for a while, it's unfortunate, it's just the way it is. Um, but. I will look at the standard one and I will get both the warp core and the beam and put them on at least for the two piece bonus and uh, we'll take a look at that ship but other than that very cool I'll save this box for that video I'm not even gonna open it we'll do it all together open it and look at it and have fun with that and I just got the Avenger I wanted to you know spec it up and do a really good job with it, but uh, now we have an, ob an obelisk to play with, so um, I actually may do the obelisk on another character because I have an in another engineer who has more resources than Ensign Ricky. He's got more weaponry as well and other things, and he may be best suited to run the um, a carrier than Ensign Ricky would be. So I may leave Ensign Ricky on the Avenger so I can keep working on it, because I do want to show more videos on the Avenger. And then I'll use my other character to show off the obelisk and start building up an obelisk build on him for now. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed that episode very long. For everybody who has uh, watched this very lengthy video, thank you for watching. 